Purdue's Zach Eady continues to look more and more unstoppable with each game. And now the Boilermakers represent the Big Ten in the Final Four. And Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese resume their women's rivalry in the Elite Eight tonight. By the way, do those two hate each other? We'll explore that a little further. Got all the answers right here on Locked On Big Ten. You are Locked On Big Ten. Your daily podcast on the Big Ten Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Welcome to Locked On Big Ten. I'm Craig Scheman. Coming up on 40 years as a sports talk show host and a play-by-play announcer. I want to thank you for making us your first listen each and every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Purdue has all sorts of momentum going into the final four. We're going to look into this, of course, and of course, Iowa and LSU, the women's elite eight going on tonight. That's going to be a great one too. Plus our big 10 top 10 observations from the weekend. You want to hang on to the end for this one. Meanwhile, let's talk about the Purdue Boilermakers. They avenged last year's immediately shocking one versus 16 seed loss to Fairleigh Dickinson in the first round of the NCAA tournament. They defeated Tennessee. Sunday, 72-66, they're going to go to the Final Four. For the first time since 1980, seven-foot-four giant Zach Eady played his best game of his career. Career Career-high 40 points in this one, 16 rebounds, and had a duel, out-dueled Tennessee's uh, Dalton Connect, who had 37 points. By by the way, he made like six of his 12 three-pointers, so he was letting it rain all day long. But Purdue was able to overcome that. Their individual battle between those two was the third time that we've had opposing players that both had 35-point performances or more in an Elite Eight game or later in the season. It was a remarkable matchup, just a slugfest back and forth. Now, Purdue's the best three-point shooting team in the country, and they were only 3 of 15 from three land on Sunday, so Tennessee did a pretty good job covering them on the perimeter. But you don't always need to have your three-point shooters hit when you have a seven-foot-four giant dominating the paint like Purdue has had all these years. Look, if you catch Purdue on a night when Zach Eady's doing his thing inside, but Purdue shooters are hitting on the outside, they've had a few games like that this year. They're unbeatable. Absolutely unbeatable. Uh, But in this case, it was all about Zach Eady, and he's just playing the best basketball of his career right now. Edie was the first player in 34 years to have 40 points and at least 15 rebounds in an NCAA tournament game. And by the way, when it came time to cut down the nets in the celebration here on Sunday, Edie did not require a ladder. He's <laughs> like, I got this. Just reached up, start cutting down the nets. Think about that for a minute. That's remarkable, isn't it? Um, what's also amazing, uh, he was just as dominant, uh, this dominant last year. He was a dominating player last year and nobody in the NBA wanted him. So that's why he returned to Purdue for one more season. Look, he'll get picked by somebody in this NBA draft, but by whom and how late, I don't know. I hear late first round, maybe second round pick for the most dominating player in college basketball right now. That's remarkable to me. Now, his numbers in college are very Shaquille O'Neal-like. They really are. Just a, just an immovable force underneath. Can uh, make, uh, you know, dunk on you at any time. Gets all the rebounds. But, you know, the NBA, they don't pound the ball into the paint anymore. That's not the style of play in the NBA. You got to be able to shoot jump shots. And, you know, more importantly, you got to be able to move and go out and guard other seven-footers away from the basket while they shoot three-pointers. Guys like Victor Wambanyama, who's 7'6", taller than Edie, by the way. Nikola Jokic, Denver, shoots threes. Zidi would have to go out and cover those guys. And I don't know that he's fleet of foot enough to do that with those kind of guys. I'm not sure he could do that on the perimeter. And that's why he's not going to go super early in the NBA draft. 
And, and again, playing time and how teams use them really depends on the team, the system, and the coach and the personnel that they already have. But right now, more importantly, how does one stop Zach Eady in the Final Four, right? Somebody is going to have to body him up, force him a little bit out of his comfort zone. Otherwise, he'll just have his way. And I'm only talking about a couple of feet, and I've only seen a few guys do it before in the past. Look, he's deadly inside five feet. That thing's going in. No question. Right hand, left hand, doesn't matter. Make Push him out two more feet. Make him make a seven-footer instead of a five-footer. Completely different player. But very few players are strong enough to do that. Teams try, and they commit three fouls in the first five minutes, and they're sitting on the bench. That's the, the, that's the their biggest defenders are out of the game. And then Edie has a field day. One player in the last two years could defend Zach Edie, and that was Trace Jackson Davis. He uh, with the Hoosiers two seasons ago swept Purdue because he was he was strong enough in his lower core to not be pushed around by Edie. He's really the only player that I've seen do it. Nobody's defended him that way since. Nobody can. Many have tried. But and by the way, I mean when you say defend. Zach Eady, that means he only scores 24 or 25 points. <laughs> so it's, it's when he goes for 35 or 40, you got no shot. You got no shot against the guy. It's a, it's a, it's a can't-win situation for an opponent, as Tennessee found out the hard way on Sunday. So up next for the Boilermakers, North Carolina State in the Final Four, the unlikely number 11 seed who made their first Final Four appearance since Jim Valvano's miraculous team did it in 1983. They got there by beating Duke on Sunday. Think about this for a minute. The last time Purdue was in the Final Four was 1980. North Carolina State last made it in 1983. I mean, like, we're at Jimmy Carter and Ronald Reagan. This is how far back we're going here. It's, it's like a time machine game. Anyway, they'll have the early game on, uh, on Saturday night. Can North Carolina State stop Zach Eady? Well, Muhammad Diera, 6'10", he's their tallest player. Also, there's DJ Burns, who's a fun player to watch, by the way. He's 6'9", he's really wide. He's like 300 pounds. He could get a body on Eady and push him around a little bit. Maybe, maybe. So that tip-off is at 6.09 Eastern time. That's the early game on Saturday. Also, a quick shout out to the Fighting Illini who went into this week, this past weekend, still alive as well. They did make it into the Elite Eight. Terrence Shannon was great with 29 points in their 72 69 win over number two seed Iowa State going into the weekend, but that was as far as they made it. They ran into a buzzsaw on Saturday night and lost to UConn, who's probably the best team in the country, 77 52. In fact, at one point of that game, UConn went on a 30 to nothing run. 30 to nothing. I've been covering sports for almost four decades. I've never seen anything like it before. So too bad for Illinois. Congratulations to UConn. UConn will play Alabama in that late game on Saturday night. By the way, quick note. Be honest. How many of you had UConn, Alabama, North Carolina State, and Purdue in your final four brackets when you filled them out a couple weeks ago? Huh? That's what I thought. Nobody. Nobody. Be sure to subscribe if you like what you're watching and hearing here today. Uh, you can follow Lockdown Big Ten for free wherever you get your podcast. That way you get the latest episode of this podcast as soon as it becomes available each and every day. All right? So don't forget to do that and tell your friends about us as well. Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes, they take on Angel Reese at LSU. A rematch of last year's Women's National Championship. It is tonight, Monday night, in the Elite Eight. The winner goes to the Final Four. By the way, do Reese and Clark hate each other? I found out a little bit about that, too, because they got that little rivalry thing we got going from last year. That's all coming up right here on Lockdown Big Ten, your team every day. Hey, if you want to go to some of these games, Final Four, start a baseball season, uh, it's a great idea. Go do it. You can. It's easy. Maybe are you the guy? Are you the one that's in charge of your group getting the tickets? You need game time. You need to download the game time app. Get all your tickets through game time for whatever you do. We're rolling into baseball season. You listeners up in Michigan. I mean, the Detroit Tigers starting out 0-3 for the first time since 2016. 
They uh, they finished off the White Sox. Now they got the Mets. I think Friday's the home opener against the A's. Go get yourself some tickets on game time, right? It is a great app. And I always like, you can see the picture, the view of your seat, of the ticket you're about to buy right there on your phone. And last-minute deals. Last-minute deal. You could save up to 60% by buying last-minute for sports, concerts, comedy, theater, you know, day of, you put the plans together, you can save up to 60% with Game Time doing it that way. Um, takes the guesswork out of buying tickets for Game Time. You can download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and the redeem code Locked On College, L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E. Locked On on college for $20 off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. I want to thank everybody for making Locked On Big Ten your first listen each and every day. You everydayers, thank you for making us go. Tell your friends about us. In the meantime, if you haven't yet, please subscribe. Just click it. It's free. It's simple. It's right there. Uh, and you can... Um, um, follow and share Lockdown Big Ten with all of your friends. Lockdown Big Ten, your team every day. And don't forget to check out our website too, talkbigtennumber10.com. Put all of our archive, everything we do there. Plus, you can get merch there. It's all right there on our website, talkbigtennumber10.com. So tonight is a rematch of the Women's National Championship basketball game with Angel Reese at LSU taking on Caitlin Clark and the Iowa Hawkeyes. And the winner of tonight's game, Monday night's game, will go to the Final Four. This Elite Eight battle is at 7 o'clock Eastern. It airs on ESPN. I'm going to be watching for sure. The Hawkeyes are a point and a half favorite in the game. They earned this spot with an easy win over five-seed Colorado on Saturday. In fact, they won by 21 points as Caitlin Clark scored 29 points and had 15 assists for her double-double. The Hawkeyes are now 32 and Four. Meanwhile, on the opposite end, of course, uh, of this matchup, LSU had to fight a little harder against UCLA. Now they did win 78 to 69. Game was a little closer than that score indicates. They uh they had a small lead. UCLA had to foul. LSU made their free throws and expanded the lead, but they, they had to earn it. Angel Reese, she had a double double, 16 points and 11 rebounds before following out. Very physical game. And uh, Flo J. Johnson had 24 points and 12 rebounds for a double double for LSU as well. Now, in last year's national championship, LSU blew out Iowa, 102-85. Reese poured in 15 points and 10 rebounds in that game and famously mocked Caitlin Clark with that John Cena, you can't see me, wave of the hand right in her face and then pointing to her ring finger because she's about to get a championship. Caitlin Clark did have 30 points in that game. So wonder if they're a little more trash-talking, rivalry, do these ladies not like each other? Um, regarding the, the hand gestures or the trash talking, I'd been under the impression they didn't like each other that much. But Angel Reese says, no, there's no, no ill will toward Clark. That's just when we're in between the stripes, it's all, it's game on. And I'm trying to get into your head. But uh, she said, if we were, you know, outside of basketball, we could chill. We're good. I don't hate her is what she said. So, and Clark says, there's definitely a competitive fire between the two as well. So pretty healthy uh, sportsmanship between the two, but we'll, we'll watch tonight. Let's see if there's anything going back and forth between those two. I know the cameras are going to be zooming in on that one. Should be a good game. Looking forward to that. And uh, it will be yet another game in which the Lady Hawkeyes will have to play without guard Molly Davis, who, of course, suffered a right knee injury against Ohio State back on March 3rd. She hasn't played since. At the time, March 3rd, that week of March 3rd, the Early indications where it was not a season ender. They were hoping to have her in time for the NCAA tournament. Well, here we are on the doorstep of the Final Four, and Lisa Bluter says she just can't go yet. They're a little disappointed, uh, not in her, just disappointed in how the knee is reacting. Uh, this uh, this uh, young lady was a starter in 27 of her 30 games. She averaged six points and was a 41% shooter from three-point land. So it uh, looks like yet another game they'll have to go without her. And in the first segment, I gave a shout-out. I know we're talking about Purdue in the Final Four. Illinois didn't quite get there. Here, I want to give a shout-out. Same situation in basketball while Iowa is trying to move on. The Lady Hoosiers of Indiana had a tough game against 
maybe the best team in college basketball in the South Carolina Gamecocks who are undefeated and blowing people out. And Indiana fell behind by 22 points in that game in the second half. But March got it to within two. Couldn't get over the hump and uh, and get the win. So their season's over, but another fine season for the Hoosiers as well as that comes to an end. Hey, I also want to mention, I watched a little hockey here this weekend, uh, Big Ten hockey. Well, it was NCAA tournament hockey, second round action, but a couple of Big Ten teams going at it. Michigan and Michigan State with a trip to the Frozen Four up for grabs. This was a close game until all of a sudden Michigan went on a three-goal stretch in the third period, and they won 5-2 to two over Michigan State. These teams have played six times this year, including uh, an overtime one last week as well. But Michigan now goes to the Frozen Four for the third consecutive year. Congratulations to both teams for five seasons, but congratulations to the Michigan Wolverines going to the Frozen Four again. Uh, also, making in the NCAA tournament, I know uh, Minnesota had lost to Boston U, and Wisconsin fell to Quinnipiac over the weekend. Fine seasons by everybody. Wanted to mention that. A little shout-out for some uh, some Big Ten hockey teams. Meanwhile, I want to ask you, I don't know if you work from home or maybe you're home in the daytime or maybe you always got, got a TV on somewhere. Are you the type that sits here and watches Fox Sports or ESPN, all those talking heads all day arguing against each other? Sometimes you got to turn the volume down. You can make the switch, though, to Locked On Sports Today. It is a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24-7 on YouTube or uh, or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app as well. I'm going to tell you about that in a minute. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. You know, I have my top 10, my Big Ten top 10 observations of the weekend. I will share them with you, see where your favorite players and or teams made the list. Maybe the same as yours. That's all coming up in one minute right here on Lockdown Big Ten. Speaking of Fire TV. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs, as well as the Fire Stick that you can plug into your existing TV. And it provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes, as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands, all for free. And that includes all of us here on Locked On. We're there. Most of the big pro, uh, pro leagues and college conferences as well. Fire TV channels lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep up to date on all the latest in the world of sports. March Madness is it's winding down here. NBA, Major League Baseball is getting going. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking shows are on there as well. I know a lot of you like those. Check out Fire TV channels on Fire TV and Alexa devices. And if you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. Visit, uh, Learn more and visit Amazon.com slash locked on fire tv once again that's amazon.com slash locked on fire tv all right it is uh time for our third segment here today uh it is our big 10 top 10 observations for the weekend we're gonna put them on screen here if you're listening on audio only um you can uh, I'll, I'll, I'll explain them in detail here so that you can uh, follow along and we'll uh, we'll fire them up one at a time. So here they are on screen, and uh, we're going to start off with a shout out to Iowa's Hannah Stolke, a uh, very very good Iowa women's basketball player. But obviously, Caitlin Clark gets a lot of the attention. But uh, over the weekend, she had a double double herself, eleven points and ten rebounds. I I think when Caitlin Clark moves on to the WNBA, I think Stolke is your star. Next year for the Iowa Hawkeyes, really good. But she scored 47 in a game earlier this year. So I want to give her a shout out. And uh, let's uh, let's go up the list here. See what else we have. Number nine. 
I was Caitlin Clark. She had, this is the Colorado game, had 29 points and 15 assists for her double-double. By the way, scored 29 points without ever getting to the free throw line. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, she kind of, she just was out there making beautiful passes. I mean, she sees things happening before they happen. It anticipates it and makes the pass and leads her teammate to the pass in a nice open spot for a shot. She's really, everybody thinks of her as a long three-point shooter, and believe me, she is. She can hit from, from anywhere in the gym. But man, she's a great passer. Fantastic passer. Uh, let's see what else we have here. At number eight, well, we'll give the Hawkeyes that win over Colorado. 89 to 68, making it look uh, pretty easy overall and uh, setting up the date against LSU. All right, let's see what else we have here. And number seven, Purdue's Braden Smith. This is in the Gonzaga game going to the uh, weekend. This would have been uh, Friday. 14 points, 15 assists, and eight rebounds in that game against Gonzaga. That's that's an impressive line. See, he's the one, you know, Zach Eady gets a lot of attention, but Braden Smith does a lot of things on the perimeter. Really good basketball player. And uh, number six, we'll give Purdue the shout out for the win over Gonzaga, 80 to 68. That one, Zach Eady, a mere 27 points and 14 rebounds. That's all? That's an off night. <laughs> Guy's ridiculous. Very good. All right, at number five, uh, shout out to Illinois' Terrence Shannon Jr. at 29 points uh, in the, um, uh, their game where they um, won and got to the lead eight, and he had 20 of them in the first half. Had a little foul trouble and then had to uh, kind of be very careful the rest of the way, but he's he was a scoring machine, and uh, Illinois, a very, very good season, comes to an end. That was, uh, of course, I'm talking about the Iowa State game. So Iowa, we're going to put them at number four for that win over Iowa State to get to the Elite Eight. And we'll see if they can build from there. First time they got to the Elite Eight since 2005. At number three, a shout out to Michigan hockey. They just beat Michigan State on Sunday night, and they're going to the Frozen Four for the third consecutive year. Congratulations to them. At number two, Zach Eating his career high, 40 points on Sunday. Just, uh, just a remarkable game against Tennessee. No answer for him, Tennessee. Uh, Rick Barnes had no, no answer for him. And then, of course, at number one, Purdue going to the Final Four, representing the Big Ten, going to the Final Four for the first time since 1980. So uh, congratulations to Matt Painter and company for all that. That is our Big Ten Top Ten observations from the weekend. Maybe I forgot one. Send me a text or tweet, message. Let me know. But there we have it. Um, hope you enjoyed that as well. So, yeah, seriously, send me uh, something on Twitter or X at Talk Big Ten, uh, number 10. Comments on YouTube are always welcome. Comments back and forth between your fan bases, a little rivalry. Always love that as well. And um, then uh, you can also find us on our website, TalkBig10Number10.com. You see the uh, scroll going there on the bottom, TalkBig10Number10.com. Whatever you do, be sure to subscribe and follow this podcast right now on your favorite podcast app, and you'll get the latest episode of Lockdown Big Ten as soon as it becomes available each and every day. I'm going to invite you to hang around and watch another one. Come on, knock off two or three of them. Lockdown Big Ten episodes. We're here every day. Uh, and then uh, also don't forget our friends at Lockdown Sports today as well, 24-7 rolling over there on YouTube. That'll do it. Um, we'll, uh, tomorrow, we're going to talk about what happens tonight with Iowa and Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese at LSU be featuring that. And plus a lot of spring football news. And it was uh, going through a lot of stuff over the weekend. Going to talk about a lot of great stuff with spring football in the big 10 coming up here this week. So tell your friends about us. And I always uh, thank you for checking out uh, us today. Thank you for the visit. Can't wait to talk to you again. I'm Craig Scheman for lockdown big 10.